Something is happening. Oh, there we go. We're back. We're online. Isn't that kind of like life sometimes? It's on, it's off. It's on, it's off. I like it, I don't. There's a problem, there's not a problem, yeah? Perfect intro for this conversation. Acceptance. The idea and the concept of acceptance. Stevie Nicks wrote that song, Landslide. She wrote it at a time in her life where she was toiling, a time where she was struggling. There is a clip from one of Oprah's master classes where she does a short interview on the topic and the experience behind this song being written. And she said she was going through a time of struggle. Finances were hard. She was going week to week, moment to moment. She didn't have enough. And it was taking a toll on her relationship. Her relationship, which was foundational to her music career, her songwriting, her singing, her co-creative process. And so it was a time where she was really kind of on her knees asking, do we press through and keep the relationship going? Is it worth it? Can we? And how do I keep my music going? Do I, should I, or should I go back and get another job? Should I do something else? Should I drop it? And she said she had this experience where she realized the gift that they could give together was greater than the gift that they could give apart. But she wrote Landslide from the experience of everything crumbling down, things falling apart. This, friends, is part of the human condition, is it not? Not part of the spiritual ideal, but part of what we experience. Now, we've had some deep conversations in this series about unity and about our concepts and about acceptance. And there can be this idea, well, I don't want to accept some of these things. I don't want to accept the idea of suffering. I don't want to accept the idea of this being part of the human condition because I don't want it to continue. I don't want to create it in the future. Friends, that's simply arguing with what is in a moment if it is already what's being experienced. If it is already what's being experienced. And we can all try, but point to one person you know that has been alive for a bit of a journey in the human experience, that hasn't had struggle, that hasn't had suffering, that hasn't had the experience of crumbling down, that hasn't had situations, circumstances, experiences, relationships that have brought them completely to their knees to a place of surrender, to a place of I don't know, to a place of help me. I think we would all struggle to find that person. So this isn't the idea of saying, well, this is the vision that we want to create. We want to create a world of suffering. We want to hold on to the attachment and the idea that we can accept the garbage of life or the garbage of the human condition, what we tend to judge as being negative or evil or disconnecting, it's not saying let's fortify that, let's lift it up, let's praise it and raise it. It's saying, do we have the spiritual strength and the capacity to be with what is? Just to be with what is. To stop, in fact, the internal war with self and with the present moment. Because we underestimate the power of that war in keeping us in discontent and trauma and drama and problem. In Unity, Charles Fillmore talked about denials. And a lot of people get denials wrong. A lot of people use denials to say, what is happening in front of me is not happening. I'm looking right at it, but it's not happening. Kind of like A Course in Miracles. You look at a chair and you go, that's not a chair. You, has anyone done A Course in Miracles practice? It's a great spiritual tool. Um, but you look at a chair in one of the activities, their daily activities, and you say, that's not a chair. I'm looking at a chair, but that's not a chair. That's even different from the denial. Charles Fillmore taught denials as a way to really show us, and this is a subtle point in unity, but it's often misunderstood. A denial is not looking at something and saying that's not happening, that it's happening, right? It's not saying, I don't feel how I feel when I'm feeling how I feel. It's saying, even this has no power over me. It's denying that it has a power because the power is in the mind, it's in the feeling center, it's in the thought, right? It's in the belief system, it's in the structure that underlies the growth of it. But it's denying the power of it. That's a misunderstood point often. 
And same thing with A Course in Miracles. So, so here's the subtlety. There was a, a sermon given by, I think it was Reverend Linda Martilla Whitset, and she gave a quote, and I wish I had this quote. We'll have to go back and look at the sermon. But it was um, something about affirmations and denials, and it was a clarification that denials are based on a truth statement. So they're based on pure truth. So they're removing the power of something from us saying, even this has no power over me. But it's also based on a statement of truth. So it's a statement of your wholeness. You know, it's a statement of light. It's a statement of love. It's a statement of purity. So it's using a statement of truth. And when we say that's not a chair, is that actually a statement of truth? Yes and no. Okay, it's a chair, but actually I can look through that and I can say it's actually a combination of metal, fabric, and wood. It's actually... um, Something that if I was into physics in a way that I don't know about, but I could, you know, know that there's not actually even solid space, right? So that's what the practice brings you to. It brings you to this place where you let go of the ideas that have been so ingrained in you that you think you know what things are, you think you know what you know, to open up to a beginner's mind. To open up to the field of possibility that there is something else here in front of me and within me that I have not yet accessed. And that is what we're talking about when Jeff Foster brings us into the deepest acceptance and this idea of deep acceptance. He's not talking about saying, in all future moments, let's look at everything that's garbage and affirm that it's going to be here because we're going to accept it, and yay, raw, life is suffering. It's saying, can you stop fighting with what's within you in this moment? Can you stop arguing with your experience? Can you let that be less frightening? Can you let the threat of that having power over you, can you let that be what crumbles instead of your sense of self, wholeness, and home? A deep distinction. There's a song, Turn, Turn, Turn. Does anyone have any triggers in that song? You probably love it, and then there's probably a point where you go, to everything, turn, turn, turn. There's just something about that song that feels like harmonizing, good, love. But then when you get to this part, right? A time to kill put them all together. A time, they don't go together in the song. That would be overwhelming. Everyone would be like, I don't like that song. A time to kill, a time for hate, a time to refrain from embracing. I don't think that song is about a vision for the future. I just got it that that song is about the deepest acceptance of what is. It's like, can I just be with the fact that this is the current condition? That there is killing, there is loving, there is rising up, there is tearing down. Joseph Campbell does a lot of work on archetypes and the patterns we see. So those are the patterns. So can we start from there? Can we start from the idea that acceptance does not need to harbor the feeling of defeat but it actually holds our emancipation. It actually invites us into effortless experience. Instead of that effortless experience, we often toil. Sacred scripture says, fear not, little flock, for it is your sources, your father, your mother's, your source is great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do you think that that means it's your source's great pleasure to give you everything that your individual self-identity, ego, mind, person, who is you, wants in every moment? Would you do that with a child? Mm. Or would you create a little monster? (laughs) But would you offer to a child everything you could possibly offer so that they had a deepest peace and calm and grace within so that they knew absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt their wholeness 
in such a way that it could not be given and it could not be taken away. That is the kingdom of God that the master teacher is referring to. It is an internal state of consciousness that can be developed in the midst of anything and everything, including times to kill, times to hate, times to refrain from embracing, including times of joy, times of love. Because in fact, friends, sometimes the times of joy, the times of love, the times of celebration are the things that crash us when we lose them or when we're not experiencing them. Somehow we get this addictive idea in the human condition that if they're not here and it's not, you know, fireworks and confetti every moment that something's wrong. And so we actually use those beautiful things in life, those heart-opening moments, those phases and stages of our experience that are blissful, and we use them to crucify ourselves for every other time in the human condition or the spiritual condition or in this life when we're not in an elevated state of consciousness. Jeff Foster invites us to let go of that. I believe that Charles and Myrtle Fillmore invited us to let go of that. I believe that spiritual teachings throughout time have invited us to let go of that. Think about a time of your deepest struggle. Just breathe into that. It might be right now, it might be in the past, it might be something you're prophesying about in the future, you got, you got your worry on. Think about the time of your deepest struggle, the darkest night of the soul, the greatest time of discontent. Just breathe into that. Think about how you felt, how you went through it, the you you experienced your coping skills, what you did or do. And now ask this question. Was what happened optional? Was the circumstance, the trigger, was it optional? There was probably a change a shift or a something that happened. Could you have controlled that? What about your dance with the what was or what is? What about having your peace stolen or losing yourself? Was that optional? Herein lies our power. Herein lies the power of the Most High to flow in us, through us, and as us in each moment as the energy of love, healing, and transformation, and wholeness. We're often toiling, trying so hard, working so hard, even at the spiritual condition trying to get things to be better rather than generating that which is broad enough, wise enough, expansive enough to hold us in all of those times. That's the inner work, the spiritual work I want to share a bit from Jeff Foster. What I'd really like to do is just sit here and read him for the rest of the service, but we won't do that today. He says this about acceptance. It's not a question of trying to achieve the deepest acceptance. It's a question of recognizing it. Seeing it. Noticing it in every single experience. You don't have to achieve this deepest acceptance. It has already happened. And what's left is to simply and effortlessly notice that it has already happened. In this moment and in every moment. 
every wave of experience, every thought, every sensation, every feeling, every sound, every smell is already allowed to be here. He goes on to talk about how if we just wake up, we'll see that what is here is here. He says, so when I talk about acceptance, I'm not using the word in the way we have been conditioned to use it. I'm using the word in a new way, one that points to this deepest acceptance of life, an acceptance, an allowing that has already happened. He goes on to say, to accept thoughts and feelings is to simply, gently, effortlessly notice that in this moment, those thoughts and feelings are already accepted, that they have already been allowed in, they are already here. Accepting is not a time-bound achievement, but a never-ending present moment reality. You cannot accept, for what you are is acceptance itself. You are not really a separate person. You are an effortless yes to this moment. He says that this definition turns many spiritual teachings on their heads. He says acceptance is not a state to reach in the future. It's not something to look for, to wait for, to hope for, to beg for. It's not a personal achievement or something that comes through years of effort. It's not a magical event a transformation of consciousness, or an energetic shift that will happen one day. It's not a task. It's not spiritual homework. It's something to rediscover right in the midst of your present experience, here and now, no matter what is happening. I... Um, kind of from the longest time I could remember, had this experience of like a hole or an emptiness, a, a missing in my heart. And so through my journey, I have gone for different support, taken the dive into different texts, different books, explored with different teachers and people, I went to college at Unity of Boulder in Colorado, and uh, there are a lot of spiritual experiences to be had there. Shamans, Native Americans, therapists, healing workers. And so I was always on this search to get this to go away, this ah. And I remember one time in a therapy appointment, I remember having to talk through the feeling and what, what it is that I really wanted. What it is that I really, really wanted. What is it that you're looking for? What's the feeling? And it was so clear to me, but it just didn't seem like something you should share because it seemed kind of lame. But it was so clear to me, I just said, I just want to be okay. Just okay. And, you know, the therapist kept kind of going, what, what's beneath that? What's beneath that? Let's be and it was just like, there's nothing else there. It's like, I know it's kind of a lame request. It's not very, like, high or, like, you know. I'm not looking to be thrilled. I'm not looking to be unmoved. I just want this to feel okay. I just want to feel okay. And it was interesting revisiting that experience in Foster's book because he refers to our okayness. He refers to that hope, that feeling, that drive within each one of us that just wants to feel okay, that wants to stop carrying around something within us that is just screaming, something's missing, life is not enough, you're alone, whatever it is. If you have that feeling, take a moment to just fill in the blank for you, whatever that is that you felt, that felt like a void. Can you give it words? Can you identify it? Jeff Foster asks us, what do you think you need to be complete? 
What do you think you need to be complete? What do you fear losing? Scripture has some funky verses that say, even what you have will be taken away. People are like, what? Kind of ties in here. What do you fear losing? What do you think you need to be complete? He says, what, if you lost it, would make you incomplete? Just breathe into those things that come to mind. Are you willing, am I willing, to engage in a deep adventure, a deep experience? of wholeness, regardless of circumstances, regardless of the have or have not? Am I willing to really recognize in this meditative moment, just breathe into the possibility that in the cycle of this life, we will go through all sorts of ups and downs, we will go through receiving and the feeling of losing. We will go through experiences based on our unconscious agreements, based on our mind's idea of what it means to have or not have. But we also have an invitation to opt out of the roller coaster ride. to release the idea of being moved by every breeze that the wind provides and acknowledge what scripture calls the kingdom of God within the living water, the present moment. Do you believe that is possible? and bring that belief back to this now moment, right here. Eckhart Tolle, who is one of the greatest spiritual teachers of our current time, as far as awakening consciousness and reminding humanity of what it is, says, people don't realize that now is all there ever is. There is no past or future except as memory or anticipation in your mind. He says, all negativity is caused by an accumulation of psychological time and denial of the present. That's what we're working with, the denial of the present. He says, you can only lose something that you have, but you cannot lose something that you are. You can only lose something that you have, but you cannot lose something that you are. Jeff Foster even talks about accepting our non-acceptance. Can we even be present to the part of us that's like, I won't accept that. I won't accept that the human condition has loss. I won't accept that that could be an experience of the future is now or the past. I won't accept even this feeling that I'm having. He says, even that, accept it. Even that, accept it. There's a part, I don't think I'm going to be able to pop to it fast, but... He talks about how when we're in that space that it's a paradox because that actually does start to shift our energy and our experience. That our energy and our experience shifts when we come from that place, when we come from that consciousness, that there is kind of a loosening up that happens. When we accept he says this, 
And clearly here is the paradox. If my non-acceptance of pain is accepted by life, totally accepted, then it is no longer non-acceptance. The non-acceptance transmutes. Logically, philosophically, rationally, this makes no sense, but it is so. He says, but I don't want you to believe me. I want you to discover this truth for yourself. What happens when we don't discover this truth? Or when we hold on to an ingrained state of non-acceptance? When we say, no, this is not how it is. What's the experience that we tend to have? We tend to live for the future, do we not? We tend to live for the future rather than fully in right now, the only moment that actually exists. We tend to try for or believe in magical cures, magical uh, experiences that will shift it for us so that we don't have to do the work. But if I just go to another psychic, if I just go to another healer, if I just go to another guru, if I just go to another church, if I just go to another community, if I just move to another state, if I just find another husband, if I just get another job, then I won't be where I am. <laughs> I won't be where I am. I won't be where I am. I will always be where I am. That's not optional. So rather than going about clinging to things, he says, that give us wholeness, trying to get rid of the waves, as he says, or splitting things into dark things, evil things, judging things as being threats or negative. Instead of seeking completion in relationships and experiences, status, youth, whatever labels you want to put it, our identities, Instead of going down that path, we take another option. Instead of filling the void, he says we fill the void with, you know, everything. Shopping, TV, substance, gurus, sex, numbing out, drama. We engage in this cycle of drama, discontent, and disappointment. And we live in this space. It becomes our current reality. When there is another option, there is another experience that is inviting us into it. And exploring our discontent can be an incredible gift instead of suffering at the hands of it. Instead of suffering at the hands of our spiritual discontent and our human discontent, we can actually allow it to serve us When we do, Foster says that suffering or stress or psychological discomfort is no longer something bad or evil to be transcended or destroyed. It is a unique opportunity to see that you are still what you are still at war with or what you are still seeking. So he asks us to contemplate this. What does your life look like? when viewed from the place of deep acceptance, this place of ever-present completeness. What does life look like when you recognize yourself not as a separate person, not as separate and incomplete, not as a separate and incomplete wave in a vast ocean seeking home, but as the ocean itself, already complete, already home, no matter what is happening? What does life look like when you know yourself to be the wide open space of acceptance in which all thoughts, all sensations, all feelings, all waves of experiences are deeply allowed to come and go. Ask yourself, what does that look like?
He says, you are the consciousness that holds the dance of form. You are the vast expanse of awareness in which the world appears and disappears. No matter what appears and disappears in your experience, you remain the calm in the midst of the storm, the deep, vast ocean that cannot be destroyed even by the most violent waves. The waves may rise and crash, but in the ocean's depth there is silence, silence and knowing. This, this is what I think in unity. When we say God is good, life is good, this is the good we're referring to. Namaste.